Mr. Bergman, is that a flute you're trying to play? No, it's not working. You know, I thought that I could actually play a flute, but it's not well, working. You well. actually have to, like, do something other than, like, you know, hit it or hum or... Bang on. Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> We're not quite, you know, not quite Jethro Tull yet. Or, yeah. Let's keep working on that one. Yeah, I really need to work. You know, yeah. I was a great kazoo player, but the flute well, I don't is know about that. not... You don't think so? Well, yeah. The flute is definitely a challenging instrument. Yeah. I'm going to have to kind of pass... Why don't you keep going on, on that one? The yeah, it takes some lessons from your daughter. Yeah, my daughter is much better at this yeah. than me. Yeah, we've got some interesting text problems going yeah, on Yeah, well, here. you can see this. We're going to talk about things called precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions, and several various and sundry other things. Uh, at least you've so moved on to a woodwind, a legit legitimate instrument versus, you know, kazoo or ukulele or bucket. What's up with the ukulele? I, I think know. the ukulele is a well, legitimate instrument. Well, maybe if you, had four, if you had four strings on your ukulele instead of just two. That's true. That might be an issue. Yeah. yeah I think so. Okay, today All right. we're going to learn about reactions. Reactions. We're going to learn how to predict reactions, like predicting the weather. It's like an art form, isn't it? It is, very much so. And, and you really just kind of have to wrestle through them. You know, I've actually had students say, Mr. Sams, I thought you were the teacher. Shouldn't you know how to do this? When I look at a reaction I've never seen before, I'm going to wrestle through it the exact same way that you guys are. Now, this text I know is small, so if you're looking at this on the small screen, it makes it kind of tough because... Um, but look at the handout. It says, yep. well, basically, the goal is to predict products and chemical reactions, and we're going to learn how to do that today. But before we can do that, we have to learn about something called the... Nacolnosos. Solubility rules. Yes. Now, in our classes, we expect you to memorize the solubility rules, but we don't do them in the standard way. No. We have something called the rules called the... Nacolnosos. The Nacolnosos. Everybody say Nacolnoso. 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 Very good. Nacolnoso. Now, what does Nacolnoso stand for, Mr. Sam? Well, you've got the NAS. NAS stand for the sodium compound. Yeah, the coals. Stand for the chlorides. Actually, that should say Cl negative. Okay, the chloride. The nose. The nitrates. And the sos. The sulfates. And the rest of them are the issue. Here's the situation here. The situation is that the sodium compounds are all soluble. soluble. Every single sodium compound is soluble. There are no exceptions down here. Now, when I say it is sodium compound, when I say NA, I do not just mean sodium itself, although I do. I also mean any element that is a... Alkali metal, uh, alkali metal yeah. which include potassium, lithium, rubidium, cesium, and ammonium? Is hmm. that one of alkali metals? That is not an alkali metal, but it often behaves like one in terms of solubility. So actually, you need to kind of think of ammonium as a na in the Nacolnoso rule system. Yep. Okay? By the so way, one thing, uh, we're talking about solubility in water, specifically. Yes. This is aqueous solutions only. Right. So aqueous solution that supplies only to there. And then, of course, the coals. Mm. Now, the rule is that all coals are... Uh, they're all soluble. With a few notable exceptions. Yeah. What are the exceptions? Well, we've got silver chloride, mercury-1 mercury chloride. Now, how would you write the form of mercury-1 chloride, Mr. Sands? I would write HG2Cl2 because mercury-1 ions are diatomic. They're really weird, but they always go in pairs. And, of course, the lead-2 chloride. Yes, lead-2 chloride. Now, this does not just include chloride. Nope, it's all the halogens, because everybody in the same family has really similar properties. Look at properties. your periodic table. If you don't have it out, you may want to pull it out. You can probably use it here today anyways. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your periodic table, the halogens, of course, are the second to last column right next to the noble gases on the periodic table. Yep. And so chloride is one of them in there. Fluoride's at the top of the list, but the naphtholnosos didn't sound right, so we called them yes. the naphtholnosos. There you go. <coughs> that moves us. Mr. Bergman is having a coughing fit here. Next, we're going to move on to the nose. And the nose are nitrates. And mm -hmm. all nitrates are always soluble. If you there ever see nitrate, there are no exceptions no, to its solubility. Not, no, they are all soluble. Very soluble. That also includes... Chlorate and, and acetate. If you see an acetate or a chlorate, it will always be soluble. No exceptions. Correct. And lastly, we get the SOs, and that, of course, stands for the sulfate. sulfates. And there are no other kind of family members here. So it's just the sulfates. Now, all sulfates are soluble. Except, Except for barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, lead 2 sulfate, and mercury 2 sulfate. That means, if you, these are the things, what this is, the nacolnosos are the things that are soluble, the ones that dissolve in water. Yes. They are the soluble compounds. The rest are, are not soluble or soluble. insoluble. Yep. That includes sulfites, carbonates, chromates, phosphates, phosphites, 
oxides and hydroxides. Now, and so on and so, and so on forth. And so there forth. are others. Now we do need to talk about, this is hard to see down here, again we have some issues, but um, if that's the case, let's just talk about the um, hydroxides, just the, real quickly. Mm -hmm. At least the alkali, alkaline earth metal hydroxides, what would you do with barium hydroxide? Is that soluble, Mr. Sands? Well, that's usually classified as something called slightly soluble. We have sort of a weird uh, category here, folks. It's called the slightly solubles, and that would be the um, alkaline earth metal hydroxides. Right. Magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. So these guys, w the deal with them is that you can dissolve some of them in water a little bit, so they will make a solution, but if you ever produce them as a product, it's going to form a precipitate. So this is a little bit confusing because technically solubility, um, we haven't really talked about this yet, but we will as time goes on. Solubility is actually a, a number. And so at what number do you, s everything is actually soluble to some degree, but some are so insoluble it's hard to even talk about them that way. But so everything's to have some slight degree of solubility. So at what value do you say it's soluble versus insoluble? And these are ones that are kind of like on the border. Yeah. Okay, so that's easier to do. Now, we say all things are soluble back here. Let me jump back to the screen, Mr. Sams. If I say that they're, um, these things are not soluble, like sulfide, mm. okay, if sulfide's not soluble, what would you do with, say, sodium sulfide? Would that be soluble? Uh, well, since it is a sodium compound, I think the solubility of the sodium supersedes the insolubility of the sulfide. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to say about these rules that's important to note is that the nickel nosos trump the... Not the not solubles. Yep. So if something is a sodium compound, even if it is one of these non-soluble compounds like sodium chromate or potassium chromate or something like that, these trump. So nickel nosos, these uh, trump the nickel nosos trump the other ones. Yep. And that's something that, that helps you understand that. Yeah, so the deal is look for the nickel nosos first. Yes, indeed. And then assume not soluble if it's not on the list. Indeed. Very good, Mr. Sams. Now, this particular podcast has um, lots of text. And mm. frankly, um, to read this on a small screen might be a tough thing. But we're just going to talk you through how we um, do these... Um, ionic and net ionic equations. Yeah, ionic and ionic equations. But you should follow along in your text. Yeah, look if at the If you're handouts. watching on this on the internet, you're going to want to have access to these texts. All right, so um, we... Email um, us. We'll yeah, to you. well, yeah, certainly. Or we might put a packet together. Okay, um, so how do we write ionic and net ionic equations? I think I'm going to go to the, the old black screen here, or white screen, I guess it is. Yeah, that's going to be and, easier to um, read. What we want to do is if we've got... Um, a reaction, like we've got the cadmium nitrate here, and we react it with the sodium sulfide. A now, two after your nitrate there. Oh, I need a two, thank yep. you. And these are both aqueous, and how do you know those are aqueous, by the way, Mr. Sams? Uh, well, we have a nitrate, which are always soluble, and we have a sodium, which is always yeah. soluble. So we have a na and a no. And why do you, how do I know that's a precipitate, CDS? Uh, well, that's a sulfide, and all sulfides are insoluble unless they have a na with them. So, yeah, so we have a, 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 nacl, a no here, a na here, and the cadmium is neither, and we have a nano, and nanos. Nanos are way soluble. Very soluble. So this is the substance that's insoluble. And so basically this is called the complete reaction. Mm -hmm. It does need to be balanced, so I'd have to put a 2 in front of the sodium nitrate. Yep. I believe is all I have That'll to do. do it. That's the regular uh, reaction. I'm just copying this down. I think it's good to kind of see me walk through this process. Yeah. If I want to then write the ionic equation, you see when something gets dropped into water that is soluble, what happens to it? At least ionic compound. Uh, well, in the last podcast, we learned that it dissociates and it yes. splits up into its individual ions. So I'm going to split that up into two individual ions, the cadmium and the nitrate. Now, I do have to put a two here. Why do I have to put a two there, Mr. Uh, well, you had two of them in the compound, indicated by that little two outside the parentheses. And when it splits up, um, we need to indicate that with a two coefficient, stating that there's two nitrates floating around. In and because sodium sulfide is also one of these, yep. I must split it apart. It's a na. And you see, essentially, if you were to look inside of a beaker, let's kind of, I'll jump back to this in just a moment. If I were to look inside of a beaker of this solution right before kind of everything happened, you would find sodium ions, you'd find sulfide ions, you'd find cadmium ions, cadmium two positive mm -hmm. ions, and nitrate, and nitrate ions. ions. Now, that's one little thing. One thing I've always told my students is, put, is stick your head in the beaker. Don't literally stick your head in the beaker, obviously, but pretend you got this tiny little scuba suit and you shrink down really, really tiny, and you jump into the beaker, what are you going to see floating around in there? Because that is the key to all solution chemistry. Get in there, see what's in there, and what's going to react with what. And so 
you have Na, sulfide, cadmium, and the nitrate. Who's going to get together? And of course, this is kind of part of prediction, and we're not really doing that just yet. But we know it's going to make this CDS. Now, I leave this together. Now, why in the world would I do that, Mr. Sams? Uh, well, it uh, forms a solid, meaning it's not in an aqueous solution, so we're going to have to keep it together. It's a precipitate. Yeah, and I think of them as they're sticky. They like each other. Yep. Uh, precipitates or insoluble things are sticky. They like to stick together, and so that's what it makes. This is called the ionic equation. This is actually kind of what goes on. So we kind of go back to our beaker, and you got the little guy swimming around. There's his flippers. Okay, hmm. um, is the cadmium sees the sulfide and says, hoo 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 da you are a good-looking chick, or whatever. And the cadmium gets together the sulfide because they like each other. Now, sodium sees nitrate and says, nah, 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 nah. Ooh, you're good. Nah. Nah. I played the flute for that one, but I don't think yeah. I could actually make a sound. <laughs> and then lastly, if I want to make what we call the net ionic equation, you ever been to a, a game, Mr. Sams, like a, a football game? Uh, occasionally, yeah. And, and when you go to a football game, what are you typically, what, what is your role? I am a spectator. Yes. I am not by any you means see, an athlete. at the dance is the cadmium met the sulfide right here, and they made cadmium sulfide. So that's like the action that happened at the game. Yep. Well, who was sitting around watching? Nitrate. Nitrate. Didn't do anything. See, he's the same on both sides of this reaction, yep. so he's called the spectator. Spectator. I oh, yeah. sat around and watched cadmium and sulfide. Join up. And then the sodiums also did the same. Yep. So the net ionic reaction is just sort of what happened. What was the action? I'm not going to write the AQ here because um, chemists don't like to do that. If they don't have to, it's a bit of a lazy thing. And that's the answer. We will put a solid here. That yep. is called the net ionic reaction. Yep. Where net kind of is what is left over after all the other stuff happens. Indeed. Okay, now we want to talk about how we can predict um, a products in a reaction. Now, we've divided our reactions into redox reactions and non-redox reactions. And so today, we're only going to look at the non-redox. The right side of this chart yep. on the, on the it says reaction. If you look at this part, it says reaction. It's got two big halves. Well, we're only going to look at the right side. Uh, later on, we'll look at the left. And so these are essentially the rules. How do you know if you have a non-redox? Now, if we don't know what redox is yet. But we're going to learn about that very soon. Um, it's two ionic compounds, like your typical double replacement reactions that you learned in a first year chemistry class. If you see an oxide, then you know you have a double, or you have a non-redox reaction. Acid-base reactions are all non-redox. Decomposition reactions are usually non-redox. There are some exceptions. Mm -hmm. If you see a word like equimolar, um, it's most likely an acid-base reaction. If you see protic or diprotic, that is also. And there's this funny thing called a coordination compound. We're going to have to talk ourselves through that and do some examples. So these are just kind of a, this is just a big schematic that's going to help you as yeah. you solve these problems. And I mean, we could go through and beat those rules to death, but frankly, guys, you're going to learn more about by this that. by doing it than you are by yeah. sitting and listening to us do this. So, so we're so. going to just probably do lots of examples. And there yeah. is lots of text now that says types of reactions. Mm -hmm. And I have it printed here. And you feel free to knock yourself out and read all this stuff. But these next few slides are all right here. I think I will talk a little bit about um, oxides. So let's turn to the oxides. Roman numeral one um, is probably not terribly important, but Roman numeral two is. Yes, very much so. So if I have a um, oxide, there are two varieties of oxides. Mr. Sams, what are those two varieties? We got uh, non-metal oxides and we have metal oxides. So let's do non-metal oxides first. If I have a non-metal oxide, that would be, for example, a non-metal. Give me an example of a non-metal, Mr. Sanders. Uh, sulfur. Sulfur. Now, that's where do you find on the periodic table? Uh, that is to the right of our little stair-steppy guy so over like there. like sulfur dioxide. There you go. And when they react with water, water. primarily we look at them as water, they are going to turn into a non-metal oxides plus water always makes an acid. An acid. So we need to make an acid that has hydrogen. Of course, acids have hydrogen in it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, sulfur and oxygen. So yep. you've got H, S, and O. So you have to kind of figure out what the formula is going to be. Yep. These are like a very, very easy. I like to yeah. just say add them together. Yeah, you pretty much just smush them together, and most of them work that way. The sulfur ones work, for sure. H2SO3. H2SO3. There that is, is the answer. I have predicted that if I take a non-metal oxide, sulfur dioxide, put it in water, it works. Yep. Or if I take, say, carbon dioxide, another non-metal oxide, add to water, you would do the same ball game. Instead of S, you have H2CO3, CO3. carbonic acid. Yep. Now, what about this one, sulfur trioxide? That's a little trickier. What's that going to make? 
And I see H2, I see an S, and then it looks like four oxygens, H2SO4. This is sort of incorrect. This is the problem mm. here because in the AP chemistry land, they like to you to write the net ionic equation. Yes. In net ionic reactions, you must dissociate all things that are soluble, the nickel nosos. Yes. And that includes anything that is a strong electrolyte or strong acid. And sulfuric acid, if you don't recall, there's like uh, five strong acids. Sulfuric mm -hmm. acid is one. You would not write H2SO4, you would lose credit for yes. that. You would write uh, 2H positive plus SO4 to negative. They might yep. even accept if you wrote H positive, and we'll talk more about this in uh, when we do acids and bases, HSO4 negative. Yep, and I know for sure that is an acceptable answer. Both of those are. So um, sometimes these are basically, and I'm not sure we've said this, but on the AP chemistry exam, there is um, three reactions where they say this plus this makes what? This plus this makes what? They have three of them you must do. They must also be balanced. But you know how to balance equations, and there'll be sometimes you don't, but we plan to teach you. And then that was a non-metal oxide. Yep. We want to do a metal oxide. And metal oxides, so an example of a metal might be what? Uh, uh, potassium. Potassium. So that'd be K2O, not KO. K has a charge of 1 and O minus 2. Yep. And then I'm going to write this this way. HOH, same as H2O. And the metal oxides plus water always make a base. base. So non-metal oxides with water make acids. Metal oxides with water make bases. So what is the opposites. base of potassium hydroxide? What is the base yeah. of the potassium? Potassium hydroxide. KOH. Now, is that correct? No, because that is a strong electrolyte. So you're going to write K positive plus OH negative. So yep. the actual correct answer is this. Now, that means... Probably to do a little balancing, too. This is unbalanced. Is That's correct. So if I've got two potassiums here, I'm going to need to put a two potassiums here. Uh -huh. um, and that gives me... Uh, I think I just need to put a two in front of the I OH I think you're minus. right. Yep. So kind of play around. Again, there is no uh, rocket science to this. It's just kind of guess and check. And then kind of a weird one is that you can have... I'm not sure this is on here, but if you have a metal oxide, I'm not sure where I have this. Hmm. Can you find that, Mr. Sun? Yeah. Plus a non-metal oxide. That is Roman numeral five, guys. So I'm jumping around. Roman numeral Sorry. five on your handout. So this shows the oxides, put them all together. So a metal oxide, let's say potassium oxide, K2O, and I write a non-metal oxide, let's say a carbon dioxide. If you look at that rule, it says it always makes a salt containing yep. oxygen. But folks, it's just put them together. Yeah. You've got potassium, carbon, and oxygen. This is just kind of like that uh, acid one. Just You're going to make together. K2CO3. There it is. And it's a nickel, no, so this is in that. But there's no water, Mr. Bergman. This is true. Actually, good point. This one would, if you were to take this, there's this. you can't split them apart because there's no water present. So you would write solid potassium carbonate. Yep. Yeah, so they only split apart if they're in water. So that was a right. very good point, Mr. Sam. I do what I can. You're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Two All right. amazing. All right. Metal oxides plus water form bases. We talked about that. That was Roman number three, Roman number four, decomposition reactions. If you have a base, it decomposes into a metal oxide and water. You have to kind of play around with these. I don't think I'm going to do examples here. Uh, we have examples printed in the paper. And you will get them ad nauseum in class. And then, uh, yes, more here. We have so many problems for you to do, you're going to just be mad at us, I think. Probably. Yeah, you're going to say, you guys are mean. But you'll get over it. So will Okay, we. now we do need to talk about Roman numeral six. Yes. Roman numeral six is something new. And there's a ton of verbiage here. So uh, obviously on the PowerPoint, especially if you're watching this on a uh, small screen, you're going to go, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, don't read it. It's on your handout. It's in your handout. So I want to talk about that we have something called a coordination compound, sometimes called complex ion. Complex ions. And people think complex ions are complex. And not they really. are not very complex. No. Nope. A coordination compound has two parts. It has a transition metal and only some selected ones. So let's actually yep. chat about which ones they are. It basically starts at iron. And now look on your periodic table. Get your periodic table out, please, everybody. Pause the video and get the periodic rustling table out. Rustling papers, papers rustling. Very good, you have your periodic table out. We actually have it on the wall, so we're good. If you start at iron and then you go over to essentially um, aluminum, this is aluminum right here, basically all the metals, so iron, cobalt, nickel, underneath aluminum you've got gallium. Basically this little block of, of metals, um, you know, gold, silver, zinc, etc., this is a, a GA, not a CA. Okay, these are the metals that do this. And then the second thing is you have something called a ligand. Mm. 
and there are only a few select ligands, which are printed on your paper, but yep. I think I'll reprint them. Ammonia is one. Water is another one. Thiocyanate is one. Uh, hydroxide, hydroxide is one. Yep. I'm missing and one. cyanide. Oh, and cyanide. So basically here is the gist. If you mix one of these guys as an ion, by the way, that means you'll have a charge. You have to figure out its charge. And one of these, then you make a complex ion. Yep. By the way, ligand only has one G. Ligand only has one Mr. G. Mr. Bergman and I are both not, I am not wonderful at spelling. I spelling challenged. <laughs> okay. So and my handwriting's really bad. That's why Bergman's doing all the I writing on these. I'm <laughs> writing because I have at least slightly better handwriting. So now as we talk about this, here's the basically the general rule. Is you take the charge of the metal, and then that determines, and then you times that number by two, and then once you do that, that will tell you the number of ligands. Yep. One G. One G. <laughs> to attach. I say I can write better, and it doesn't look good today. <laughs> okay, um, and then you must then refigure the charge. Yes. So, we'll do an, a, a couple of examples here. So if I have Fe, three positive, and I react it with thiocyanate. What I need to do is this three charge, the charge of iron is three, double the charge is six. six. So this will be Fe, parentheses, S-C-N, six. Now what we need to do is we can put brackets around it. You don't necessarily have to do brackets. I think it makes it easier. Yep. And we refigure the charge. Iron has a charge of plus three, because there is one iron mm -hmm. right here. The thiocyanate, since we have now said that there are th six thiocyanates, of course, they will have a charge as a group of... Negative six. Negative six. So we take positive three plus negative six. That adds up to... Negative three. Negative three. So this is the complex ion, um, which has a name. I don't recall what it is. Yeah. Not terribly important. Another really common one is... Um, Ferrocyanate, thiocyanate, something like that. I can't remember. That'd be hexacyanate uh, iron three. Yeah, something else. Um, let's take a common one. Let's take, for example, if I have actually, let me do it a little differently. If I say zinc, I'm gonna write it. Actually, let me blank screen here. More space here. So let's say I have uh, zinc nitrate is added to concentrated. I'll abbreviate the word concentrated ammonia. Now, if you see something like this when you're when you're doing these product predictions, the, uh, you're going to get to a point where words are going to send off bells and whistles in your head. You're going to see ammonia, and you're going to go, ah, that's one of the ligands. This is going to be a complex ion. I'm going to double check that by looking to see if a transition metal is also in the problem. And look, there's zinc. Now, warning, ammonia is a little tricky because ammonia is also typically found in acid-base problems. True. So, but there's just, that's the only two places that you'll see them. Yeah, and zinc nitrate not being an acid or a base, we can conclude it's yes, a indeed. complex ion problem. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this zinc nitrate, and uh, we, I, we would say this is in a solution. I probably didn't say that. Aqueous solution. And so what I'm going to say is I'm going to break the zinc uh, into ions. I'm going to dissociate it because it's a nacl no so. It's yep. a no so, right? All it's nitrates are soluble. And then I'm going to say plus ammonia. And the form of ammonia is NH3. Now, don't confuse ammonia with ammonium. Nope. That's NH4 mm. positive. It is not the same thing. Nope. No ligands with ammonium. Now, um, I actually usually typically look to see if I can find a precipitation reaction, but mm -hmm. since we're talking about coordination compounds, that would sort of be silly. Yeah. And so the nitrate is not actually important, and it would fall out. So I'm going to make a coordination compound with the ammonia. The zinc has a charge of two positive, so you double that, and you get... We need four ammonias. So we're going to say it's Zn, parentheses, NH3, 4. Now we refigure the charge. The charge of the zinc is plus 2. Mm -hmm. There are four ammonias. Now what's the charge of ammonia? I don't see a charge. So that means it has a charge of? Zero. So 4 times 0 is zero. 0. So the charge of this whole thing would be? Plus 2. Yeah, plus 2. So that's how you do these. This, by the way, actually, let me tell you the name of this. And he write this down. This would be called tetra amine. Two M's in amine? Uh, yes. I think. Zinc two. I'm not sure you necessarily would have to put the Roman numeral two, but that would be the name of this ion. Tetra, meaning there are four. Tetra is the, fo the fourth. You ever played the game Tetris? They all have four squares. They all have four squares. Hence the name. Do, 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 that game? Do, do, so yeah, so Tetra do, do, means zinc do, do, two. Do, 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 do. 
See, I can be just as annoying with my you're music, pretty good. You're pretty do, good. Do, 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 do. All right, let's stop. I give him the flute. Oh, my God. No, I don't know about that. Oh, do you want to talk about aluminum at all? You the know. weird one, or do you want to just hit that one in class? No, I think, well, real fast. Aluminum's, no, I no. don't think so. Okay, it's we'll talk about it later. They always would get it right. You know? Yeah, that's so true. I don't think that's Okay, important. never mind. All right, um, if it's not, now we're just going to do some problems. So yeah. um, we got a bunch of problems for you to do. Hydrogen sulfide. Yep. Is bubbled through a solution of silver nitrate. Let's see if we can figure out what the products are. Yeah. Now, when you approach these guys, step number one is figure out what kind of reaction do you have, and therefore, then, what rules will you follow? So, now, hydrogen sulfide, you always have to look at the question mm -hmm. um, and decide if you want to split it apart. Do you split hydrogen sulfide apart, yes or no, and why would you or wouldn't you, Mr. Sam? Uh, I'm going to say you would, because it's an acid. But, but it's, it's a, a gas. Acid. But it's a gas. You're right. No. Bubble through a solution. So this is a gas. So hmm. So we're gonna leave hydrogen sulfide together. Yeah, I'm gonna together. leave it together. So it's gonna You're be right. H two. Not a strong acid. Now remember, I know that because S has a charge of two minus, and yep. H is positive one. So it's H two S. Yep. And it's bubbled through a solution of silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Now, would I separate that one? Uh, definitely, it's a no. It's a no. So Ag positive. It's a nickel no so, and it's a no. Yep. So I dissociate it. So now we have a reaction, mm -hmm. and now I want to predict the products. Now you could do the the Sammy inversion here, if you will, right? Is that, is that a word? The Sammy inversion. What's in the sure. beaker? H2S, Ag positive, and NO3 negative. Now who's gonna like each other? Who's saying, oh, she's mm. so hot? Well, nobody likes nitrate. Nobody likes nitrate. No. Sorry, nitrate. There, we'll learn where nitrate actually does something yep. later on. But uh, typically boring. Silver might be interested in sulfide because sulfides are not mm. typically soluble. You see, silver can meet sulfide. Now he's still connected to the hydrogen, but he really likes her, so he's gonna steal her away. Yep. And it's gonna make Ag2S solid because, of course, that's the precipitate. And then it kicks out also. Uh, it's going to kick out some hydrogen. Now, an important thing, it's not H, it's H positive. Plus, right. Boy, if you mess one little thing like that up, they get really testy mm -hmm. the AP test. And to balance this, you'll need a two here to get the two silvers. Yep. And, and I think you'll need two, two hydrogens. Yep. And that's it. Yeah. So that's the answer to question one. Yeah. We want to jump on down to question number two. Number two. Now, in question number two, concentrated ammonia. Oh, there's that ammonia stuff. Yep. Is that a dissolution of copper two nitrate? And copper two is a transition metal. He's one of those guys in that sort of block of elements. So, so I'm I seeing see transition metal and a ligand. So ammonia, so I'm going to write NH3. Mm -hmm. And it's a nitrate, right? Uh, copper two nitrate, yes. So I'm going to se separate them out. Cu2 positive plus NO3 negative. Yep, because no's are soluble. Now, what do you think the nitrate's going to do? Nothing. Because see, he is very boring. He does not like it. Nine time, 99 times out of 100, nitrate's going to be a spectator ion. So we've got the copper and the ammonia, so what are we going to do? we got we got charge of positive 2 here. This yep. is going to make one of them coordination compounds yep. or complex ions. He's going to make Cu. And four ammonias. Ammonia connected to four. Of these ammonia products. has no charge, so, so it stays at 2+. Plus. 2+. Plus. There you have it. So that's a pretty easy one. Yep. Those are really easy. If you end up with one of those on oh, the AP yeah. test, they are very You're easy. You're golden. All right, now, dil equal volumes of dilute equimolar. Now, mm, see, there's equimolar, some key words there. This is an acid base problem. It is. Sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid are mixed. Okay. So, equimolar, sodium carbonate. Now, how are we going to do this? Sodium, nah, is this, nah, sodium carbonate. So it is. Na positive plus carbonate. Don't get this confused with hydrogen carbonate. Is reacted with hydrochloric acid. And do we separate hydrochloric acid? We do. That's a strong acid. No, I know no, that one for sure. No, I'm not going to mess that one up. Strong acids. Now, we, let's write at the top here, equimolar. What does that mean? Uh, that means we have the same number of moles of everything. So that's easy. Same number of moles. Yes. Now, by the way, let me say one more thing here. Sodium uh, carbon is Na2CO3. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to, you could put a 2 here. Yep. Um, but um, you're going to see he's going to fall out anyways. Yep. So who's going to like each other? Well, let's see. The na and the coal are not going to like each other because they're always Neckle. soluble. Neckle. Neckle. So neckel. Yeah. So we those are going to be your spectators for sure. So, so now we've got hydrogen and carbonate together. How are yep. we going to put those together? Now, it's very important we understand this equal molar business. Yes. Because, well, the hydrogen and the carbonate can come together to form the hydrogen carbonate ion. Yes. But why didn't you write, now, HCO3, what's the charge of that? Minus one. How do you know that? Because uh, I memorized it on my big list. How else would you know that? Uh, well, if I have a carbonate of a minus 2 and I stick a hydrogen with a plus 1 on it, you just add up the charges. That's right. Um, why didn't you just do this? Well, oh, if I can write it up, H2CO3. Yeah. H2CO3. Well, the key here is the word equal molar, meaning we have the same number of moles of hydrogen as we do carbonate. So in that case, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So we have one carbonate and one hydrogen.
Now, if the word excess hydrochloric acid was in the problem, then we would have made the H2CO3. So with acid-base problems, you're going to look for the two words, equal molar and excess. And if, this, if it is a, uh, uh, a diatomic acid or a triatomic acid, you're going to add the appropriate number of hydrogens to it based on if it's equal molar or if it's excess. I think you meant triprotic and triprotic. Tri oh, well, what did I say? Triatomic. I'm sorry, yes, I did mean diprotic and triprotic. Okay, sorry but about you that. got the idea. That's all right. That's why, That's we're why both there's here. two of us did it together. All right, number four, dilute acetic acid. Okay, now acetic acid is added to solid. Now, if it's solid, it's sticky together. Mm -hmm. it together. Magnesium carbonate. I'll go to the blank screen. All right. Acetic acid. Now, would I read that to split it or leave it? I'm going to leave it because that is a weak acid. Okay, and it's added to solid magnesium carbonate, yep. which is MgCO3. Mm -hmm. Play the charge game. I'm doing this fast, but I'm expecting if you need to pause and ask questions. And it's solid, so we're going to leave it together. Ask. Okay, right. and this is a solid. So something's going to happen. Yeah, okay. If you see a carbonate... This is very important. Any, an old carbonate. Yeah, thing. anytime you see a carbonate as part of uh, one of your things here, and it combined with an, an sorry, acid. go ahead. Yeah, combined with an acid, you're going to get a very special reaction. So let's actually talk ourselves through this one. Mm. I want you to think of this roughly just as a double replacement reaction. Yep. If you were to think of this double replacement reaction, it's kind of old school. You'd write Mg, and then you'd say C2H3O22 yep. plus H2CO3. Right. Now let's chat about magnesium acetate first. That's easy. Mm -hmm. What's the story on acetates? The acetates are, are part of the no group, and so they're going to be soluble. So, so we're going to ignore them. The, this is going to separate, so this is actually sort of wrong. So it's going to turn into magnesium 2 positive plus acetate. Now you think this is acceptable, but here's something I want you to understand, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That whenever you make carbonic acid in an acidic environment, it does not make carbonic acid. Nope. It breaks apart. It's kind of like a secondary reaction. Yeah. It breaks apart into water and carbon dioxide. If yeah. you think about this. So secondary the decomposition is what happens. It's a secondary yeah. decomposition, so it makes water plus carbon dioxide. So anytime H2CO3 is a product and it's in an acidic environment, you're going to make it H2O and CO2. So this is the product here. Now let's have talk ourselves. Is there anything I should cancel out? Are there any spectators here? Well, not in this case because both of our reactants are stuck together. They did not dissociate because the magnesium carbonate is a solid. The acetic acid is a weak acid, so it didn't dissociate. So there are no spectators in this one. Now, have we got a balanced equation? Uh, hmm. Uh, it looks pretty balanced yes, to me. Do. Yep. Wait. No, no. H's. No, H's. You're right. Two of those and two acetates. Yeah. Now we're good. Yep, there, we go. there it is. Because this made C... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. C right here. Okay. Yep. I believe we have just one more, Mr. Uh, well, I see two more here, but... Oh, really? That's we it. may have to... Uh, I don't have it on the slideshow, but oh, we will maybe go not. ahead and add it. <laughs> yeah, we right. have the technology to add we it to the show. All right. Sulfur trioxide gas is added to excess water. You Ooh, know what? You can't get this Sulfur trioxide. I did it in the examples earlier. Yeah. Sulfur trioxide That's is a added to water. That's a non-metal oxide, which always makes an just acid. So them again, together. just smush them together. H2SO4. Correct? Correct. No. no correct. we got to split it up because that's a strong acid. To balance two of two. So this is sort of incorrect. If you wrote that yep. as sort of a separate step, that would be okay. Yep. And it looks like on my slideshow, I am missing the next slide. So we'll yes. just go ahead and do it right here. It says powdered magnesium oxide. Yep. So when it says powdered, what state of matter is that? That's a be? solid. MgO solid. It's put in a container of carbon dioxide gas. So what do we have? What kind of deal is that? That's a metal oxide combined with a non metal oxide. So that's the one we just smoosh together and make a salt. And the salt would be Mg? CO3. Just add everything up together. No, it's not in water. Nope. Uh, so we cannot dissociate it. It wouldn't nope. dissociate it anyways because mm -hmm. it's not a nacolmoso. So that's how we do that. So um, should I try my fluid again here? You can try. I'm not sure you're going to have much luck. Hey, I made a noise. Down. There's a noise. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a... Yeah. It's very bad. Why I, am I this is definitely you? not my yeah. instrument. I'm going to have to stick practice to chemistry today. To a different instrument. Yep. All right. See you in class, guys. Bye. Bye.